Fat women, there are men that will give you the princess treatment, but if I'm being completely, completely honest, I never go looking for them, and I don't think that you should either. The kinds of men that give princess treatment are the kinds of men that look at you as though you're like the epitome of exactly what they want. Yes, that has to do with looks, but it also has to do with like your personality, how you hold yourself, like a lot of different factors. And which is not a good thing, by the way. You shouldn't just want to be with somebody because they love you or care for you exactly the way that you are. Like, there's value in somebody thinking that you're hot or attractive or any whatever synonymous word that you want to use. But ultimately, you want to be with somebody that's going to encourage you to grow, somebody that's going to encourage you to make the right decisions, somebody that's going to help you in your life goals, right? A compliment to your life. I don't know why so many people nowadays think it's a flex or a good thing to be with somebody that literally is devoted to you, like all the time even on this girl's page like maybe you're seeing a video of it right now but she was like bragging about how her boyfriend's like outside the car with like an umbrella while it was storming and she was like bragging about how great it is to have a boyfriend that's like doing that which is really cringy by the way it's not cool to have a guy that's like standing outside your fucking car while it's raining when he can just go, go into the car to show you how devoted he is to you that's really really crazy no that's absolutely not something that you should be flexing i don't care what anybody says that's not princess treatment. I don't even understand. You guys have like really fucked up what princess treatment is. Princess treatment should just be like, oh, he likes me enough to like maybe take me out sometimes and treat me like a good person. I don't know why princess treatment has turned into like, he needs to buy me bags. He needs to fly me out. He needs to be devoted to me to completely all the time. He needs to be always at my beck and whim. Like this stuff is really, really toxic behavior in relationships. And I understand why these people, these people might think that is because we grew up on Disney Channel stuff and we idolize certain relationships. And like, we only see the outside of these relationships. Like if you go on social media and see, you see people posting pictures of themselves and it looks all happy, happy go lucky, awesome, amazing relationships. But in reality, they're not, they're all terrible. Everybody's going through terrible, disgusting stuff. The person that you're idolizing probably has like foot fungus on their face because they have to suck their girlfriend's toes and she's in the gym 24 seven. So you know her she's got athlete's foot all over her shit. So yes, it's not a good idea to date somebody that is gonna give you this quote unquote princess treatment because this particular aspect of the relationship is not even like sustainable in the long term. Like this guy's gonna burn the fuck out and it's not even good to have somebody doing this for you because you're going to walk all over this person there. This person is literally at your beck and whim. Nobody likes that. Do your own shit. Let me do what I got to do and you do what you got to do. And then every once in a while, we do stuff together. We're compliments to each other's lifestyle. We're not each other's lifestyle. I'm sick of people thinking that this is how you're supposed to have relationships. It just screams I've never been actually in a relationship before. And it makes sense. These people are perpetually always talking about how they can't get menses and stuff like that, which is fine. Like, I don't think it's a good idea to just want somebody to be with because you want somebody to be with. You should go into it with the right perspectives. Like, okay, I want to be in a relationship, but hopefully the person that I'm in a relationship with values me in the same way that I'm going to value them. Not just go into a relationship because you're fucking desperate and you've never had a relationship before. So you're going to like try to hook onto any guy at all. And if a guy's like there and he's doing everything for you is not good. That's not a good thing. That's terrible. That guy is probably desperate as shit. And he's going to go, he's going to, he's going to do the stuff that he probably shouldn't be doing because he knows that you're the only one that will be with him, which is not a good reflection of you either, because that just means that you're desperate too. And just know how you are now, you are someone's dream girl. It's just like a, re it's such a terrible way of looking at it, dude, because like the way that you are now, meaning like there's nothing you need to do to change because somebody will like you regardless, but it's completely ignorant to the fact of like, do you like that individual? It's like the people that have these like unrealistic dating standards of like, I need a guy that's six foot four. He has to be making a hundred K a year. He's got to have this, 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 all these things. Right. And I always think like, okay, so you want like the top 1% of the 1% of these guys. What percentage of those dudes are gay? What percentage of those dudes are married? What percentage of those dudes don't like fat girls? What? Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like all these dudes that you're listing, you're like getting a percent of a percent of a percent of a percent of a percent. And not only that, what are the chances of you even liking this guy? Like if these dudes are working 24 seven and you're over here thinking that you're going to have any type of contact with this guy? No, absolutely not. Like 
Yes, there are dudes, there are people out there that are going to like you exactly the way you are, but that's ignorant to the fact that these people probably have other things going on, and even if they did devote their entire lifespan to you, that's not good because you probably don't even like that. Like, it turns out when you do have somebody that does that stuff, most people don't like it because it's really, really clingy, and most people don't like having clingy. They want somebody that's doing their own thing and that that's devoted to their life goal, that is doing something, and then they spend time with you on the offhand or, like, on the other side of the, you know what I'm talking about, when they're not busy. So... I disagree that that it, there is somebody out there that, that will like you, sure, but do you like them? It, are they somebody that you want to be with? Like, it's it's just completely absent-minded thoughts. Like, sure, I'm sure there are somebody, but like, how desperate is that individual to want you exactly the way you are and never expect any change at all? That is terrible. I think you just have to ask yourself if the kinds of men that you are attracting, if they're the kinds of men that you will want so many women feel defeated but in reality i feel like the best way to go about it is to enjoy life know that there's so much more to life than just companionship I, i'm sorry i don't believe in soulmates i don't believe that another person completes you you True. are complete as you are Compa that's yeah, solid facts solid facts you should not be expecting other people to be your sole person and it seems like that's what these people think princess treatment is is like a guy that's just going to sit there and do everything for you open doors cater to you good morning text messages every single day which by the way is really crazy i knew a girl that literally told me one time she was like listen if you don't send me good morning text messages every day then it isn't going to work and i was just thinking like what the fuck are you talking about like you get up literally an hour and a half before me so does that mean that like when you wake up I need to like set an alarm and then send you a message and then go back to sleep. Okay, that doesn't seem sustainable in any way. That's kind of ridiculous. Like a lot of these stuff that people think is like a relationship material is not. Like people have their own shit. People are doing their own things. You should be 100% yourself and the other person should be themselves as well. And then you guys just compliment each other. Just like icing on a cake. Companion is just that it's a companion it's someone to go through life with and I'm not saying that that's not a beautiful thing it is absolutely a beautiful thing but I really feel like if you're enjoying life then people will look to you as someone that they can enjoy life with I used to spend hours communicating with guys on like dating apps and here and there and I realized how much energy I was putting into it and how much energy I was taking away from all these beautiful, wonderful things that I could be doing in my in my real life. True. And this is something that a lot of people do when they're very young because they don't know how to properly navigate relationships. And I don't know if it's like a failing on parents or a lot of parents just kind of see the responsibility of learning about relationships or sex in general to maybe the school system or the internet, dude. Like a lot of people I know were watching tutorials on how to have sex because they had no idea what to do or even know what a vagina was. Like I know for a long time when I was like 14, 15 or 16, there was a rumor going around that like women had four holes on their vagina and then everybody was questioning where they were and what they did. So I don't know. Like I didn't know that women were like kangaroos. If you guys didn't know, you know, vaginas on kangaroos or have like three holes, I think, or something like that. Or like they have four vaginas. I don't know. But regardless, the point I'm making is a lot of people nowadays have this misconception of the way relationships should be. And a lot of parents, like, I don't know if like, I don't know if we had poor reflections on what relationships are supposed to be based off those things because most of the time people do get their references from parents or people around them that are adults. So maybe it's that, maybe it's the Disney Channel stuff, I don't know. But a lot of the stuff that we've been taught is just flat wrong. Like a lot of people think that just having boundaries is crazy. Like I remember I was talking to a girl and I was in the dating market, right? And she was like, um, I'm going to go to the club. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not like really down for that. Like if we're dating, like I don't really want you to go to the club unless I'm there or like, you know, like, w you know, things like that. And she was like, oh, I can't be with a man that has this type of those types of restrictions. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, what do you mean? Like, that's a to me, that wasn't even like a bad thing. Like saying that I didn't want you to go to the club. She was like, oh, I got girlfriends and they have, you know. And I want to go to the club. And I shouldn't be held back. And I was like, that's fine. Like, you can do whatever the fuck you want. But I'm just not going to be there. And we never talked to her again. Which is fine. Like, if that's what you want to do. But a lot of people will just cut relationships down just to, for, like, one or two things that are just, like, obvious statements. Like, I don't want you going to the club without me is somehow really crazy. It's not. Like, that's a normal thing. I'm sure. And I'm, I'm totally fine with women having boundaries as well like if you want to if you're in a relationship and a woman says oh i don't want you to go to the store without me okay fine come on let's go within limitations of course like if you're taking 45 minutes to get ready like i'm already fucking left and i can come back in that same time but anyway 
I think we've all experienced a guy that has been trying to pursue us over and over that like lives in our dms and just will not take no for an answer it's gross those guys are awesomely disgustingly terrible like it, it it's really cringy and it's not even just for men like I've, I've had these experiences with women too that just have nothing going on and they want to make you their everything and it's okay when you first get it when you're younger you see it and you go like this is really cool like i have somebody that's like literally obsessed with me but then you realize oh shit wait a minute this person's like actually crazy like they're gonna like microwave my hamster they're gonna, like key my car and they're gonna like write me love letters with their period blood like it's gross so yes it might seem cool when you're like 21 and you have no idea what's going on or like how to navigate the dating market but when you're like 25 26 27 it's just not worth it anymore like i don't have time for that shit like i gotta do my own thing and i know you gotta do your own thing and the fact that you're spending so much time on me is gross do your own shit focus on yourself and we'll like get together some other time right it's like that's what a relationship realistically is is especially in your earlier years you're working, I'm working, we're doing our own things, and, like, to sometimes together we'll watch Love is Blind on Netflix and eat popcorn. Like, that's what relationships are, realistically speaking. That kind of energy is something that is very much felt, and there's a reason that we do not find that attractive. And we have to remember when we're giving that energy. And trust me, I am not judging anyone because I have absolutely been there. I'm judging them, dude. You should not want to be in a relationship with a guy that's giving himself 100% to you. That is not good. That guy has nothing going on. He probably is a loser probably you should want to be with somebody that is doing something that is actively pursuing stuff because that is really attractive to be with somebody that's like got their goal set in line like maybe they got a career goal maybe they got a gym goal maybe they got a goal in a fucking video game i don't fucking care i don't need somebody to spend me spend every single waking moment with me that shit is terrible do your own shit i love it when people go i gotta go to the gym i love when people go i gotta get this work paper done i gotta get this shit done today and i love that shit because it shows me that you have incentive like you you have incentives and that's awesome same thing with me like i don't want to spend time with you today because i have a lot of work to do and that's okay because you should know that that's good that's growth that is growth in the relationship too because that shows that, that person's responsible not somebody that's just going to sit there and send you good morning text messages and tell you that your vagina smells good all the time i realized my last relationship i fully like push things and move things along so so fast because i had that desperate energy Terrible. don't be like me True. think of your life think of all these things that have at the beginning her shit wasn't that good but as she explained it more definitely agree to do with finding the love of your life and and do those things go travel find a new hobby True. if you're like oh i don't have money fine take the time to learn how to earn more money true dude man when i listen to people that like have no relationship experiences or people that are very very clingy like for instance if you listen to amberlyn reed she is one of these people that will tell you i need somebody to be with me consistently i need somebody to give me attention consistently i need somebody to like always be there for me helping me doing stuff for me and that's unsustainable it's not something that most people can do and i know that for somebody like amber that's optimal because she probably has like very very poor relationship skills and probably has never actually been in a relationship so in those scenarios yeah it's probably okay for her but for most people it's not good and make no mistake about it it's good for her but it's not actually good for her like she deems it as okay but it's not there's so many things you could be doing with your time that has nothing to do with guys and i promise you when you're not looking for it i know everyone says that and it drives you absolutely crazy but when you're out there actually doing things and living your life that's when they find you true but you should also be act if you want a relationship you should be actively looking for it so if you want to be on relationships um if you want to like go on dating apps or you know ask some people out going to clubs going to bars whatever like you should be putting yourself in places where you can meet people if that's what you want and you have to ask yourself if the right man the perfect man the perfect mr right just for you were to come into your life right now would you be ready for him no would probably not be mrs right for him and listen, I can honestly say that I am still working to be that Mrs. Right. You can't control what other people can do, but you can control what you do. Damn. The world becomes a beautiful, beautiful place. Damn, she must be listening to some of my videos, dude. Externalizing rather than, my bad, internalizing rather than externalizing. Working on yourself first and foremost, and then hopefully as that progresses, the outside, the outside perspective changes. When you get out of your own way and you start taking intentional steps towards creating your own reality because we do have more control of our life than we than we think true remember we're all princesses all girls <laughs>
I don't know about all that, dude. I think it's really cringy when people say, like, oh, yeah, we're all princesses, or we're all queens, we're all kings. I think it's cringy, dude. You're a human being. Just rep that. I don't know, dude. Be modest. I don't know why some people feel like they're, like, top-notch all the time, dude. It's okay. A lot of people have main character syndrome nowadays where they think, like, they're the best at everything, and, like, other they're flexing on their other people, like, oh, yeah, look at me. I'm way better looking than that person. And I'm like, it's so, it's not, it's not a very attractive trait when somebody does that. Like, when I'm out with somebody and they go, like, oh, my God, like, do I look better than that girl? And it's just like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, what? What What do you mean do you look better than that girl? Why would you even say that shit? It's, it's terrible. And I've been with people like that. I don't like it, personally. Is that about whether or not you look better than another person? And also, that's not even where a person's real value lies. Like, it's great that you look good. Like, you have a great butt cheek capacity. And they're very domesticated. That's awesome. But optimally, you would want to be with somebody that has a very good baseline understanding of mental capacity like you don't want to be with somebody that's like always questioning whether or not you think they're pretty or how pretty they are compared to another person or how good looking they are um that just screams insecurity i don't really give a fuck to be honest like for me i know that i'm probably on the opposite end i remember one time somebody called me a narcissist and i remember as i was thinking about that i was like that's some serious fucking projection because if you looked at my camera roll you would find maybe one picture of me in the last four months and mostly every picture I take is immediately going up on my Instagram. By the way, follow me on Instagram. So, like, if you see anything on my Instagram, that's just the pictures that I took. Like, I don't I don't have any pictures of myself. I really don't like looking at myself. I don't like hearing myself. I don't like hearing any of that stuff. So, it's like, when somebody says, I'm a narcissist, I'm always thinking, like, what the fuck, dude? That's, like, the farthest thing that I could possibly... Like, I know how I identify, right? I know how other people see me. And when somebody says shit like that, I always think, like, that's a major projection. Like, obviously, you should know. If you know me, that's not me. Those are princesses. I really, truly believe that. Bye. I'm Good information. About men and my experience dating men, if they see any, like, <coughs> creak, a little slot in the door of any insecurity, they're gonna crank that soldier boy. It mm, It just depends, dude. If you're with somebody that sees insecurities and then tries to, like, emphasize those things or like point them out to you that's probably not somebody you should be with it's okay to like poke fun with somebody um i like to call it like playful bullying because like if you're with somebody and you can make them laugh or you could point out some like funny inaccuracies that they had going on like you maybe point out like a lisp or something like that it's it's funny sometimes it's funny like i like that i like the playful banter i like making fun of people in a very playful way to me that's very satisfying but if you have an insecurity like i remember one time i told this girl um, cause like I, I, you know, I know that when you are really getting into a relationship with somebody and you want to get like deep in a relationship with somebody, you tell them things that you probably wouldn't tell a normal person. So you tell them deep, very deep things. And then you tell them that. And then a month later, I remember she brought it up to me. She was like, you're a pussy, you're a pussy for this. And I was just thinking like, that's really terrible. Like that's really gross because I gave you a very vulnerable aspect of my life. And instead of like taking that and then like using that as like, a, oh my God, this person is like actually opening up to me and like being vulnerable, this is really powerful for me. Um, they instead took that and used it against me. It's not good. So um, it should be emphasized that if somebody is doing that, that's not a person for you. That's a very gross aspect of, of, of a person. That's not that's not a good person. So um, I would say in general, leave that person probably. I mean, not all the time. It might be okay depending on what they say, but if this is what's happening and they're using stuff against you, no. One thing I know for certain, people can smell insecurity on you. And they can also smell body odor on you too. So make sure you wear deodorant all the time. I mean, not all the time. You don't have to wear it like if you just got out the shower or if you're not going anywhere that day. I don't know if I wear deodorant. No, I did not put on deodorant today. But the point I'm making is definitely put on deodorant because it's really, really specialized for the armpits. And that's going to alleviate the problems of the smell. And they will use this against you. And there are people that actively look for people like that to take advantage of. I know. Criminal behavior. Walk in that date. Walk in anywhere you're going with confidence. Head up. I don't like the argument of like walk anywhere with confidence or do everything with confidence because it's not practical for most. It's not practical for a lot of people. Like a lot of people are just not very confident people in general. And they're just kind of passively going about life. Like. When somebody says do everything with confidence, like I get what you're saying. I agree that people should be more confident and they should be like better secured in themselves. But it takes a lot of work, a lot of deliberate work, and it takes a lot of understanding of who you are. And most people are not doing that type of work. And that's okay because that is what most people are doing. Therefore, you're not like outside the norm of like regular people on that front, right? But when I hear people say that shit, it's just like you're that's very ignorant. Most people are not gonna do that shit. I, you know, for me personally, I don't really like. I don't really understand the world in that particular type of way. I'm 
pretty confident within myself. But like sometimes it's like you have moments where you're like, I'm just not having a good day. I just want to sit in today. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to like call anybody, you know, things like that. But it's okay to have those times, those types of times. Like it's fine. You should be confident, but like within reason. Eye contact. No and like, again, like if you're just not that type of person that like uses eye contact very frequently, like I know when I argue or like if I'm having a conversation with somebody, I tend to like look off into different directions. And I've been called out for that a bunch of times where somebody's like, which is really fucked up, by the way. Like if you're in a relationship with somebody and somebody calls you out and they go like, uh, look at me, look at me when you talk to me. And I'm just thinking like, bro, I've been with you for like more than two years. You know, I don't look at you when we have conversations. Like, you know, I like look off or like when I'm talking, I like look in a, di- a particular direction. Right. And it's like really fucked up that you would say, look at me. Cause it's like a power play. You know what I'm talking about? Like somebody's trying to use that against you. Like, no, you will look at me in order to say this. Like, no, fuck you. That's fucking terrible. Why the fuck would you say that? No, that's gross behavior. So if you're not that type of person that looks off and if you're the type of person that looks off, it's probably incentivized for like, look at that person when you're talking to them like emotionally and stuff like that but if you're having like regular conversations don't think you're weird for like looking off or like thinking about stuff like people do it a lot you're not a weird person for that looking down no dodgy eyes it'll make a difference you know how many times i make eye contact and I, my heart is pitter patter pitter patting pitter patter pattering do they know that no maybe yes but in my head they don't and that's all that matters have that confidence, conduct yourself with confidence, you will see the difference in the respect that you're given, especially on dates. We fake it till we make it over here. I think a lot of people have a misconception on how people are supposed to act. Like, not everybody's going to act like this. And people are awkward, especially post-COVID. A lot of people and a lot of dudes in general have, like, almost no social interaction. Like, most people nowadays, um, when they're communicating with other people, they're not communicating with other people, like, in public or in, you know, outside areas. Most people are communicating with each other on the internet. So, if you're expecting to meet a dude and he's got, like, the best social skills ever probably not going to happen and it's more than likely going to be that way too for women as well women tend to be a little bit more social so maybe i'll give them a little bit more leeway but a lot of dudes are just kind of awkward like i know for me for instance i'm a little bit awkward out in public like i mean i like to i I express myself in a little bit different ways compared to maybe other people but i think that if you gave that individual a chance or at least maybe forgave the things that you thought were a little bit cringy or awkward and it turns out that you maybe like that thing a little bit more than you thought that you would have if you didn't have that person display those things to you you know i think it just depends are we confident every single day no am i gonna cry and be upset about my arms one day but then walk out on the tank top the next day yes for example for me there was a time i was smaller and there was a time i was bigger I pulled the most when I was bigger. Do you know why? Because you had less standards, probably. <laughs> because dudes probably approached you more because you were busted. So they thought they had a higher chance with you or something. I don't know, dude. To be honest, I have no idea how this works exactly. Because I've been around really, really, really pretty women. And they got approached, like, daily. Like, most of the time. Like, very, I'm talking about girls that are, like, the top 1%. Like, these girls are the most pretty girls you'll ever meet in your in your life. And they got approached daily, like three or four guys minimum every single day. And I'm not even talking about like Snapchat or like dudes on Instagram that hit them up. No, no, no. I mean like in public, like doing regular things, like going to the gas station and guys behind the counter going like, wow, you're so pretty. Can I get your number? Or going to the supermarket, guys approaching them, workers, right? Going to the gym, people there, like multiple times i don't know what this same would be for like fatter women i would presume that they probably still get approached since they have vaginas regardless and vagina is in hot commodity and most dudes just want to smell vagina because they have the op because they want to have the option to so i'm thinking that if you were pulling more while you were fat it was probably because you had less standards maybe i don't know because i had more confidence then than i when i was smaller i hope this helps you had more confidence then than you did when you were smaller i i would need to know why Bye, my bodies. Dating while fat in a small city be so hard because there's so many girl and guy codes that you got to follow by. And I remember when I was going through my whole phase, like, I had cracked, like, four friends out of a friend group. And- Damn, dude. I, I, it's just so concerning when people say they had a hoe phase because, like, I mean, I understand it. Like, I guess everybody technically has a hoe phase. I guess I had a hoe phase, but my hoe phase was like one body, which was like, I guess one person. And even then I was trying to turn that person into a relationship. Like for me, I guess I'm not even trying to like brag and say I didn't have a hoe phase. I think it's okay if you did, but I just think like people are so confident while talking about that. Like, I wonder what they mean by hoe phase. Could it be like one or two bodies? Maybe. But most of the time when people say I had a hoe phase, it's like, (laughs) I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 20 bodies. I remember I met this one girl. 
And she was like, oh, yeah. Um, when I was going through my whole phase, I was like, oh, tell me about your whole phase. Like, what would, what did that consist of? And she was like, oh, I was just meeting guys at the club. I was meeting up with dudes on Tinder. Like, we were just talking, having conversations and stuff like that. I was like, how many people did you have sex with? She was like, not much. And I was like, how many? She was like, 30. And I was, she was like, 30-something. And I was like, 30-something. Didn't even know the exact number, which was crazy to me. If you go 30-something, that's really concerning. And she wasn't even counting the women. Like, she had sex with women while she was doing it. A lot of people, a lot of women don't count women as, like, actual sexual partners when it is like if you're a metal lesbian like they count having sex with each other as actual sex not just always about penetration so yes that counts as a body too so if i was like well you count the women how many would that be she's like i don't really like that's not really that doesn't really count it's like if you did though she's like i don't know probably double or something probably more i don't know it's just like i'm not saying anything about it but sometimes when i hear whole phase i'm like damn i i, I can't even imagine and when I got to the fourth one, like, it took time to get to him. So when I got to the fourth one, it was probably, like, two years between the, the third and the fourth one. And when I got to the fourth one, like, me and him was locked in. Wasn't on switching that. That was my name. Okay, so I'm guessing when she said she cracked off four of her friends, I'm guessing that she had these four dudes that were a part of her friend group initially that she maybe was attracted to and then she took those guys out of her friend group so she can pursue them sexually in that particular genre yeah my man my man and when i got to the fourth one like me and him was locked in wasn't on switching up that was my man my man my man and when we got to the point where like oh we're trying to get serious i had to tell him the truth like i only told him about the second and the third one because the first one had already passed so i just felt like that knowledge was not supposed to be disclosed um so what? i told him about the second and the third one and when we came to common ground like so she told him about her hoe phase, and I guess that consisted of four guys, counting him, and I guess she's telling him, but she's not going to tell him about the first guy because that's personal information, which is kind of crazy to even say because listen to this, right? How are you not going to tell the dude that's your man, your man, your man that the first guy was a part of your hoe phase, but you're okay with telling TikTok that that was your part of your hoe phase? Like, you get what I'm saying? She's like saying like, oh, that's personal information. But apparently it's not personal enough information for me to know or like everybody else watching this video right now. That's just kind of weird that you're okay with telling us but not the fucking your man, your man, your man. Everything was good. Like we had decided like everything was good. Okay. Boom. A bitch exposed my messages with another nigga. <laughs> While you were dating this dude? <laughs> dude, I don't know, man. This whole face kind of sounds a little bit crazy. A nigga that's not even involved. So... And I were the DMs from like a year ago? Were the DMs from like two years ago? Were the DMs from yesterday? When were the DMs established? Like, I I think this is pretty, I think this is information I'm going to need to know about at the bare minimum, dude. If I'm like getting to know you, right? And like DMs get leaked and the DMs are like from three years ago before we even met. That's fine. I don't care. That's okay. Like you were with that dude before me. So it's fine. But if you were DMing this guy, sexual or whatever the fuck, while we're dating, um, yeah, dude, that's an issue. That's a real big issue. Can you go into that a little bit? My messages with another nigga, a nigga that's not even involved. So, and I will never forget, like, it wasn't just me and his messages. They were buck wild, but it wasn't just me and his messages. Like, Damn. he was messaging 20 bitches. Damn. One was my cousin. Like, it was crazy. Small city, though, right? Um, and yeah, I will never forget, like, how he dogged me out after he seen the messages. I never even got to see the messages, but I knew it was in our inbox. But I will never forget how he dogged me out. And... Call me all different type of hoes, which Damn. at the time I really wasn't, but I kind of was recovering, like you know. A recovering, a recovering hoe. <laughs> what? what, dude? What did these DMs say, and how long ago were they taking place? Because if it was like three years ago, it's probably okay. Like for me personally, if me and you were dating and we established good boundaries, but then again, I don't even know if she's saying that this is like a. She did say she was going through a whole phase, so I don't know if this was, like, a part of the whole phase or not. Like, if it was, this guy is, like, whatever, then. If he's calling you a hoe, it is what it is. Fuck him. Like, literally, right? At that point, you don't even care. So, but if he's your boyfriend and you're telling me he's your man, your man, your man, if I'm your man, I'm going to be pretty fucking, uh, yeah, apologetic over that shit. It's fine. Like, if that happened three years ago before we even met... What am I going to do about it? It's, like, literally fine. It's like me getting upset that you watched a movie with somebody else before me. It's okay. I know you're not a virgin, dude. I know you did some shit. It's fine. But, like, if we were together and you guys had this... Uh, to me, it just kind of seems ridiculous. Like, it, it, either this guy was very immature or you were texting a guy while you were... And you said that shit was crazy, too. You said the DMs was crazy. So, if you were texting that dude while we were dating, yeah, you deserve it. That's fucking... That's just plain and simple. And it was just crazy to me, especially because, like, him... And the dude in the messages were kind of like, you know, 
concurrent when it came to each other because that's not cool bro nah bro what are you talking about what dude you were so you were doing this shit with this one guy and before you were doing stuff with him you were doing stuff with his friend what do you mean concurrent what the fuck you talking about use proper words so they were friends and you were fucking with both of them simultaneously what the fuck and the dude in the messages were kind of like you know concurrent when it came to each other because in the beginning i was talking about for them but i was nobody's girlfriend and it's uh, bro, I don't care. Nah, dude. Nah, bro. I understand what she's saying, but that's gonna piss somebody off. Okay, dude. If you were dating, okay, look. If me and you were about to be in a relationship, and you and I found out like a few months into that relationship that at the very beginning of our relationship you were sucking off my friend, but like you're gonna forgive yourself by saying like, but we weren't actually like properly dating. I that's not a, gonna be a, that's not gonna be okay for me. My friend, my fucking friend, dude, you sucked off my friend. Nah, 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 no, nah. There's nothing else to say about it than that. That's not that's a no go. I know why this dude left you now. That's crazy. The more context I get, I'm like, dude, okay, never mind. This is fucking insane. You were, you were, you were suckling Suckatash and his friend, and you're surprised that he called you names after you fucking found, after you found the DMs. Cause. In the beginning, I was talking about for them, but I was nobody's girlfriend. And it's just crazy to me because he messaged me like, are you still, do you still get down like that? Like, are you a hoe? And Bro, what the fuck were you doing? <laughs> Bro, I would love to know what they, what these activities were that transpired that you're literally, like, dudes are hitting you up going like, yo, you still do that crazy shit that you were doing? Like, you remember that time that you sucked me off and my friend off simultaneously and he didn't even know about it? Like, that's crazy. Can you, can, do you still do crazy shit like that? Like, what, are we, what were you doing? For this to get exposed like that. Like, as if somebody leaked my DMs, it wouldn't be like, oh, your butt cheeks are so crazy. I just want to, like, domesticate them. Like, it wouldn't be some crazy shit like that, right? That Like, I would need to know what kind of crazy-ass DMs are these, bro? And why are dudes hitting you back up going like, yo, do you still do that crazy shit you were doing, bro? And I'm like, nah, you know, we just keep 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 laughing because I'm really the cool ex. Like, I'm, I'm really cool. That's, I'm sorry, dude. It, 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 it's always, like, a red flag to me when I meet somebody that has friends with their ex like it's fine if you have kids with the person obviously or you like married like these things are fine but like it's not a good thing to be friends with your ex person person right uh, oftentimes i feel like the person is still hung up on that person and whenever i talk to somebody and they go like oh yeah me and my friends my, my ex still talk i always think like why why is that dude that's a red flag i'm not saying i'm gonna ditch you over that but it's something to be aware of that's something in the back of my mind and most people are probably gonna be thinking about that too regardless and it's just mind-boggling to me because i will never forget like when he was like yeah like he he thought he like first of all you you should just stuck around because when those messages came out i really upped the score in i really i really tapped in with it i could have now i didn't what but i should have but i really got the hose then what you got the hose after you broke up with this dude how are you a recovering hoe and then you relapse into hoe because the dude left you after he found out that you were suckling Suckatash and his best friend? What the fuck are we talking about? So you're saying, like, you shouldn't have left me because I turned worse and I would have done some crazy shit with you if you just stuck around. What are you talking about? What is the, what? How do we get here? What are we even saying right now? I'm fat. I am always going to be hyper aware of how much physical space I'm taking up. I'm fat. I have that horizontal crease going across my abdomen from always sucking in my stomach. It's also probably because you, let's be honest here for a second, dude. It's not solely because of that. It's also because when you lean, when you're sitting down, I do it too from time to time. Like I have the gamer posture where I lean forward quite a bit and it's not good, but I've kind of accepted it as like a normal part of my life at this point. Like if you ever see me walking outside, I walk very, <laughs> I walk very awkwardly. My back is like kind of weird. So I'm like a weirdly shaped person, right? So I've accepted that I somewhat am a very weird walking person kind of oriented person but it's okay when these people though when they talk about that horizontal like line across their stomach that line is due from leaning forward or in their case because they have so much gut capacity it's just because their gut is like folding on top of the other gut because it can't optimally sit on top of the other gut like there's not a, a solid platform if that makes any sense you just have gut on top of stomach on top of stomach and it probably smells bad it probably smells really bad because you gotta think about the sweat 
You gotta think about the accumulation of the sweat that's just like continuously glistening and glazing that particular stomach fold. And it's like any other any other spot in your body. Like fold your kneecap on top of your knee, right? The back of your knee, like have it together. Dude, sit like that for five minutes and you like pull it apart. Sweat glistening, globs of fucking disgustingness. Now think about how much disgustinger it probably is given that you have that area of your body literally all over it. So like your stomach, the back of your knee, maybe you have like the under boob part over here, right? You know what I'm talking about? Like sometimes you see people with that like back boob area where they sometimes even got more back than they do front, which is crazy. Um, which is like, I, I feel like if you have... I feel like if you have more back boob than you do have front boob, man or woman, that's an issue. This is something you have to address. This is not something that I would, this is not something I would live with my life. Like th thinking about like how I would look in the mirror and turn to the side and just see all that back, that bubble backness you got is not optimal. But these people live like that, dude. So no, it's not because, it's not because you're slouching. It's not because of anything. It's just because you're fat. I'm fat. I'm going to notice and read between the lines when you never post me on your social media feed or on your stories. Yeah, you're, you, that's just weird, dude. Okay, look, there's a difference between a couple social media and a personal social media. So, like, for me, for instance, I would never post, if I was dating anybody, I would never post that person that I'm with because it's just not optimal. I've seen tons of stories. I've seen tons of people that have done that before. And I can give you some examples right now. Amberlynn Reed would be like a very, very good example uh, because like over her years of being on the internet, what has happened? She's had multiple relationships and what happens every single time? They end. Most relationships will end. That's just what it is. You, the only time relationships don't end is when you're with that person for the rest of your life. But most people shuffle from relationship to relationship to relationship to relationship, which is fine because that's just how relationships work. Like you have to investigate, you have to see what works and eventually something hits the wall and then you just guys don't work anymore. It's fine. But when you post people on the social media, right? Uh, when you break up, which ultimately will happen, according to statistics, averages here, um, then you have to delete all those pictures because it's awkward that people are going to look at your profile and see like a picture from two years ago of you and your ex-girlfriend having dinner together or doing something. That's going to be weird. So it's better probably to just not even have those things to begin with. And then also it's really fucking awkward when I see people posting their significant others and they like brag about it like, oh, my man did me so right. He bought me an MK. He bought me a coach. He bought me this. He bought me that. It's not about that, dude. It's, it's not about that. I don't really give a fuck, honestly, that your boyfriend or your girlfriend did this or that or whatever. Like, it's cool that you guys are in a relationship and it's awesome. It's all this other stuff. Like, if you want to do it, you're fine. But for me personally, I find it really cringy. By the way, this is a star patch, star patch, star patch. I have a pimple. In fact, I will look up a restaurant or a venue before we go to see what type of seating they have. It's just not... If I'm sitting here and I'm about to take you on a date and you tell me like, oh yeah, before we go on that date, I don't know if I, if we can go to this establishment. And I'm thinking like, oh, is it because like the food, you don't like sushi, is it because you don't like these particular types of burgers, have you eaten here before? And then she go, no, I just don't know if I'll fit in the seats. Why are these issues for you? Like, why can't you not be fat then? Why, why is it that you have this issue and still you have this issue? I don't want to have to go on a date with somebody and then investigate the seating arrangement to see if whether or not the structural capacity of the seat is eligible in order to receive your enlarged belly. It just doesn't make sense. I, I don't want to do it. I just don't. I'm sorry. I might be a bad guy for saying this. I'm prepared to die on this hill. It just doesn't seem like something I'm willing to do. Like maybe you're the type of person that needs to have consistent bathrooms, right? I've dated people that have to go to the bathroom everywhere they go and it's always a problem, but that's okay because that makes sense. You have pee and you have to you, you have a uterus and you have those other things that you know, generate pee or whatever it is i don't know what it's called but you have that i'm fine with that but to sit there and say like we need to investigate the seat capacity for these chairs at a restaurant is crazy if you call most establishments and you hit them up like hey listen guys um my girlfriend you know she's really fucking ginormous she's really big matter of fact it's actually kind of crazy um i need you guys to can you guys real quick look at the seating arrangements do you have a guy with like a a measuring tape can he like measure out the seats and tell me how wide they are and how deep they are because my girlfriend is so fat that a regular chair she'll break it so i'm doing this for you like i'm actually trying to help you guys out so that way you guys don't have to buy a new chair so can you go ahead and tell me that real quick because my girlfriend is fat as fuck dude she is big and if my hips are gonna hurt all night it's crazy fat, i am going to have that awkward conversation and it's like also too like it's not just the chairs this is something you're gonna have to deal with for your entire life this is this is not a 
You know what I'm talking about? This is something that's going to be for every everything that you do is going to be a problem at that point. If you're telling me that normal sized chairs are hurting your 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 hips and your your gut because they have armrests and stuff like that, it's not just the chairs, honey. It's everything. It's going to be every everything in your life walking running oh well, I, mean, I don't know about running but you know what i'm talking about like things like that are going to be very 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 difficult for you in general so it's not even just the chairs and if my hips are gonna hurt all which my is one of the reasons why i feel like most people just don't want to date fat people like if i have to deal with these problems why the fuck would i sit there and try to like uh, why would I sit there and, and willingly go into a relationship with somebody that's going to have these issues and do nothing about them? You have the means at which to avail, to alleviate these problems, and you still don't do it. Like, you know these are issues, and yet you still sit there, literally, complaining. Right. In fact, I am going to have that awkward conversation with the guy to remind him that I'm fatter in person than Crazy, I Crazy, bro. I just, I'm sick of this conversation, dude, bro. Can you imagine getting a convert? Can you imagine talking to a girl and you think she's a cool, amazing person, right? And you know she's bigger. You know she's fatter. You know she got a little bit of extra, whatever you want to call, whatever word synonymous you want to use with voluptuousness, sloppy, girthy, whatever you want to say. And then she hits you up on the phone like, hey, just to let you know, like, um, you know how, like, on my profile it says BBW? Yeah, so, like, I'm bigger than that. I'd be like, what? Uh, how big are we talking? Like, you know, what do you... <laughs> like, if, if, if somebody tells me, you know I'm fat on the phone, if somebody just says that, like, hey, you know I'm fat, right? I'd be thinking, like, damn, like, how big are you? Damn, bitch, what the fuck are you talking about? How big the fucking are you if you're gonna have to call me up and give me, like, a... A warning. You know what I'm talking about? A disclaimer before we meet up. Like, just in case you forgot... I am fat as fuck. Like, you gotta be big as shit if you're sitting there trying to give me a disclaimer for that. I'm immediately thinking that you lied about your profile. Because if you have to tell me that you're fat, and I didn't already know, like, if I looked at your profile and saw you were fat, but you told me you were fatter, I'm thinking you're fucking ginormous, bro. And on the dating app that we've met on. I'm fat. I will always be envious of thin people and what they can wear to a professional work environment that I would never be able to get away with because it just doesn't look as professional on my body as it does on a thin body. Get over it, dude. Lose some fucking weight, dude. It's just like, these people complain about shit that's just so irrelevant, man. That'd be, it's not even the same comparison. That'd be like me complaining that like Rosie O'Donnell or like Hillary Clinton looks so good in a, uh, a, you know, like a suit dress or whatever, but I can't wear that same suit dress and look the same goodness in that. No, it's like, it's not even that because like I'm a dude and I got a big ass meat. So like, obviously my meat would be interfering with anything I wear in general, but for you to sit there and say like, oh, I'm envious of other people and what they can wear because they're thin. Bro, 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 why aren't you skinny? Why aren't you lost the weight? Why haven't you put yourself in a position to at least have a little bit of weight loss? I do actually like the sweater though. The sweater is nice. What do you guys think about the sweater? I do like the sweater. I just think it's like bullshit. Like you're sitting here complaining about stuff that doesn't even have to be a problem at all. You can just not be fat. And I know it's not as easy as just saying, you can just not be fat. But these people literally project so hard all the fucking time. All their insecurities. Literally. They they literally are telegraphing all of their problems under the guise of I'm beautiful and fat. You're going to be able to find whoever you want because men should appreciate you regardless of who they are. Who the fuck are you where you think that anybody should appreciate you regardless of who you are? Who You're not. You're not. You're nobody. You're a nothing. Okay? So, like, when you say that shit. You're expecting that somebody is entitled, like you're entitled for somebody to know this about you, or you're in, you're entitled for somebody to give you that extra benefit of the doubt, but you don't even think it's a benefit of the doubt because you're not even actually considering the weight as a bad thing, when it's obviously a bad thing. Going into a relationship with somebody, knowingly that you have these problems and issues and illnesses, and then still having those issues and not doing anything about it is crazy. Why the fuck do you think that somebody should be putting up with those problems when there is somebody else out there that's just as good as you, just as funny, just as talented, just as good in conversation, but they don't have the problems that you have. Stop making it seem like you're so amazing. You're not, okay? Get into the pool with the rest of us. Stop being so entitled, dude, okay? Fight like the rest of us, dude. Like leggings. I'm fat. I'm leggings are not something professional. Professional, dude. Leggings are not professional. Where? What are you? Go, what are you talking about? What are you going to a fitness meetup? No, leggings are not professional. As professional on my body as it does on a thin body. Like leggings. I'm fat. I'm gonna cut my hair short and constantly be told that it makes me look bigger and yeah, it's not does. slimming. 
uh, yeah, longer hair definitely makes you look more slimming because you can coat your face with it. And it's like a hijab almost. Like you're just making your face thinner by proxy of the hair being in your face. So she's right about that. It's the same thing with like glasses. Like if you have a very round face and you wear round glasses, it's going to make your face look rounder. But if you have like squared off glasses, it makes your face look a little bit more structured. There are men who are attracted to fat women but will not date them. And that is perfectly okay. True, 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 true. There are plenty of guys out there that are definitely willing to date very overweight, plus size women. It's fine. Those those men do exist. But I always like think, why would you want to bank on these guys? Because like, I hear this a lot that the guys that are willing to date very overweight plus size women are the guys that have fetishes or that have very low standards or guys that just don't really care about themselves. And that's probably the majority of dudes. Don't get me wrong. There are probably guys out there that do take themselves serious and they probably just don't care about your physical shape. But then again, why would you want to be in a relationship with a guy that doesn't care about your physical shape? You would. Don't you want somebody to want to physically be attracted to you? In my opinion, yes. I want you to tell me that my pectorals are glistening and glazing. I want you to tell me that the tip of my penis looks like a bell. I want you to tell me that when I squat down, my butt cheeks are massive. I want you to tell me all these things. And I want you to be attracted to me. And I want to be attracted to you, physically speaking. I know there are people out there that do not have physical attraction for people. And then that they, they you know, like that's what they do. But for most people, for the majority of people, like 98% of people, they want to be attracted to the person that they're with. So if you are literally working off the disadvantage of not being the most attractive, it's okay, by the way, to not be the most attractive you can possibly be. And by the way, yes, there are going to be people that are more attractive than you. And that's okay. But you should be trying to make yourself more attractive to the person that you're with. And if that means losing weight... There's nothing wrong with that. It's okay. And by the way, as a byproduct of that, you're becoming healthier, which is more attractive. There are women who are attracted to fat men and will not date them. And that is perfectly okay. I've heard that one quite a bit, dude. I think it has a lot to do with sex, though, because I've seen a lot of bigger... Okay, I haven't seen a lot of fat guy porn, but I've seen a bunch of it. And sometimes you don't even know if it's gay porn or not gay porn, because the woman... When you're a very, very obese woman, you don't know if that's actually a woman or not. You know what I'm talking about? It could just be a very overweight man. There's a lot of, like... You know, look, when you're, when you're a bigger guy, you have this, like, gut area that, like, comes over, right? It, like, slops out in front of you, right? So you have, like, this big, like, bleh, right? And you can't see penis capacity. And sometimes I don't even know if they're having sex because how am I going to know? It's like almost impossible to see anything. So sometimes if you're watching heterosexual, okay, heterosexual pornography with two fat people, very overweight, obese people, you might be gay because that actually may not be heterosexual pornography. That actually just might be two men that look like they might be women, but you can't authenticate whether or not they are or are not women, and now you're just gay by proxy. You're a, you're a homosexual now, because you watch two fat men. Two fat men topped off. It's really crazy. And that is probably really concerning for you now that you realize that, right? But it's okay. Um, it doesn't mean that you're totally gay. You might be accidentally gay. You're not, like, solely gay. But the point I'm making here is that... Uh, when you have sex as a fat person, it's very ambiguous. You don't even know what you're doing sometimes. You're just sitting there hoping for the best. And, you know, I guess flopping. If you're two fat people, two having sex simultaneously, I don't even know if you can. It might just be impractical for you. Two thin people, fine, because you can see everything. You don't need any help. One thin person, one fat person could do some things. If he's the guy, he might be able to drop it on your back, his, his gut, pick up his layers, throw them on your back. Um, if you're a fat, if you're a fat girl... I guess you can lay down. I don't know what the appropriate positions for most fat people are. Most women in general are not even willing to get on top for more than like two minutes at a time. So there's that. So it, it, it just really depends. I don't know. Like you, fat girls are almost definitely not getting on top though. Let me give an example. I'm really attracted to like emo guys, alternative guys, guys with tattoos. What are you talking about, dude? You're attracted to emo guys? <laughs> what is an emo guy, bro? Are there men that are emo that are in their 20s and 30s and 40s? What is an alternative man? What is that? Okay, whatever, dude. I don't know. I'm not critiquing her taste. It just seems weird. Punk, whatever you call Punk it. is weird too, bro. Jesus Christ, bro. What is like your entire like bracket of men that you enjoy are dudes that were like really, really cool from like 2004 to 2011. Like fine, whatever you want to do. I don't know. For me, it would be like, you know me, I'm a snow bunny, but I'm like, I'm an inadvertent snow bunny. So I've only really fucked with black girls, but not on purpose. Like I threw out my rod and when I reeled it back in, black ladies. So I guess I'm more interested in ethnically ambiguous women, women that you don't even know of. Like you look at that girl and you go, this woman could be from 
like 15 different countries simultaneously and you'll never know which one so that's probably like that for me and if i was to say like an actual like because she's talking like punk alternative emo i guess women that are put together like boss queens or whatever women that can do stuff themselves i don't know i like women that are like really really secure in themselves that can argue them, but i really couldn't see myself in a relationship with someone who meets that description not that i have many of them beating down my door i'm just personally not that cool <laughs> and i don't see myself i like this girl she's real humble fitting into the lifestyle of someone that meets that aesthetic as a fat woman i need a man that is very secure and is ready to face the challenges of dating someone that's bigger i just like i hate this i hate this idea i've heard this i've heard this type of like lingo before in conversations i've heard this in in the sense of like oh do you think you can handle me? Do you think you can handle the caliber of woman that I am? And I always think, no. Why why is it when I'm like I want to date you and you you hit me with can you handle me? What do you what do you a bull? What do you mean can I handle you? I have to break you in like you're a fucking horse. I hope that if I'm dating you that you're not going to be like putting me in a position where I have to handle you. I hope that you're just a good enough person for you're not going to make my life harder than it already already is, right? I don't understand why this is a like a talking point for so many people as if it's a good thing that you're a lot to deal with. That's not good by the way. It's not good. You shouldn't be trying to make you shouldn't be going into relationships knowing that you're extra and you're going to be putting this person through more stress. That's what that's what when I somebody says, "Can you handle this?" That's what I'm thinking about. That's what I'm thinking about. The same thing here. I need a man that's secure in the in the, in the all the problems that we're going to have to deal with while me being fat. Why are you fat? Why the fuck are you giving me these disclaimers before we even date telling me, "Can you handle me being fat?" There are going to be problems with me being fat. Why are you fat? Why are you fat? Why are you fat? I don't want to deal with any of that. No, I don't. Why the fuck would I want more problems than I already have? Okay, look, being in a relationship, I get it. Takes a lot of deliberate work. A lot of people sleep on how much work it actually takes to maintain a relationship. Okay, there's a lot of compromise, a lot of deliberate work. There's a lot of like, you do this, I do this, and we're going to come together sometimes to do stuff together. I get it. There's a lot of work that goes into it, okay? Anybody that's in a successfully long relationship will tell you that. But and it takes a lot. It's it's a it's a lot of problems, right? There there are, there is going to be problems, but the problem there is that those things are going to come up naturally. There are going to be issues that arise, okay? But if you're telling me that there are going to be problems baseline because of your weight, which is something that isn't even something that you have to have, it's malleable. You can literally lose that weight, and we don't have to deal with these problems anymore. So you're literally putting these problems on me and yourself knowingly, on purpose too. And I'm just sitting here and I have to deal with that shit. No, no, nobody should have to do with that shit. Nobody. And the fact that you're just like making this a part of your, your whole personality is insane. Lose some fucking weight and not have these problems anymore. That is very secure and is ready to face the challenges of dating someone that's bigger. The kinds of men that are more concerned about people staring at them or what their boys think are not the kind of men that you want to date. Probably like guys like me. I've dated women before that are like, oh, is this guy looking at me? Is this guy looking at my ass? Like, are we hot together? Do I look good today? What do you think about that guy looking at me? What do you think about this? Like, for me personally, I never really gave a fuck. I know a lot of women out there do find value in knowing that they are really, really attractive and that, like, you're with them and it's like a flex almost. I never really gave a fuck. I don't really personally care what other people think in the sense of, like, if they think my girlfriend or somebody you're dating is, like, very attractive. I don't I don't care personally because, like, here's the thing. Here's how I look at it, right? If I'm dating you, and let's say you're a 10, and I'm realistically a 5, okay? It's great that you're a 10, physically speaking, but you're a fucking 2 in every other aspect, you know? And, like, I feel like people look at people outwardly, and they think, this person looks hot, amazing, beautiful, spectacular, all this great stuff, and they could be. But you don't know what they're like under the surface. You don't know what they're like when they're arguing. You don't know what they're like when they just randomly bring up conversations and, and, and they argue with you or whatever the fuck. Like, just because they, they're a hottie on the outside doesn't mean they're a hottie on the inside. So it, it always, like, makes me... It always makes me a little bit like laugh a little bit when somebody says, oh man, your girl, because I've had this conference, com comments before, man, your girlfriend's so hot, your girlfriend's so attractive. I'm not even trying to brag about this, but I've heard these before, your girlfriend's so attractive, I can't believe you. And I'm just thinking like, dude, like, uh, you know, there's more to somebody than just looking physically attractive. To me personally, like, it's great that the person that I would be with is very attractive, but 
ultimately, I don't give a fuck about that. Like, that's not even the top thing on my list in terms of what is really, really good. You know, like there are other things up there. So when somebody says this shit to me, I always laugh a little bit because it's like, you're just looking at it from the outside in, dude. And like, I promise it's not what you think it is. You know, like it, it's just so interesting how people will um, just just basically boil a person down to their physical appearance. And I guess guys get a little bit more leeway on that than women because women are almost always primarily judged based on their physical appearances and men are almost never. But um, sometimes when I get those comments, I'm just like thinking like, dude, come, it's, it, it's such a, why would you think about it like this? You know, I, I don't usually think about that. That's why whenever I, talk to a girl for the first time from dating somebody, I almost never talk about their physical appearances. And if they are pretty, they know they're pretty, obviously. Like there's almost never a time where a girl doesn't know she's pretty. Maybe she wants to hear it and that's okay. But most of the time, I don't really give a fuck about it. Like it's cool that you're pretty and you have big boobs and you're busty and stuff like that. But like, so what? Uh, to me, it don't matter. But um, anyway, that's why I'm special. You wanna date someone who makes you feel safe and puts your needs above their own. I don't know about that puts your needs above their own is not I don't think so I don't think so dude I don't think so I don't know man maybe this is just her misspeaking I think that when you're dating somebody you should have a person that is most definitely taking care of themselves first and foremost that is like very important if I'm dating somebody and they go I have a skincare routine I take showers I go to the gym I wash my dishes I have this like schedule to how do I have wash my clothes that stuff's really attractive to me because that's like so adult that's so amazing so responsible of you if I knew a dude okay let's say you were dating a guy and he was neglecting himself for you nah that's not good. And I know you guys might be saying he's putting your needs before his. That doesn't mean he's not using his. That's not doesn't mean that he's also not like taking care of himself. Sure. But he's putting you above him. And that's not good. You should be taking care of yourself. He should be taking care of himself. And you guys are complimenting that. Maybe he helps you with stuff. Like I know when I've dated women, I couldn't do certain stuff like pluck my own eyebrows. Thank you for plucking my eyebrows. I don't know how to do it. You do. I guess I can learn how to do that stuff, but it's not her lowering herself or like passively deducting from her to up me no it's not it's just she's just plucking my eyebrows because she's good at that and i'm not good at that and maybe i cook her breakfast one day you know what i'm talking about like there's a there's a give and a take it's not i'm lowering myself for you so i disagree i think that it's okay every once in a while to give a little to give to give something to another person that's fine but not for not not to make your needs lesser than the other person that you're dating they are an adult they can care they can take care of themselves you want to date you want to date uh, so many times i hear people say that shit it almost kind of sounds like these people want to date dads like they want to date their fathers bro like every i i don't know why so many people nowadays are have this idea in their head that they have to be taken care of and they have to be catered to and they have to have like this, this realistically speaking you want to date a dad you want to date your mom that's what it fucking is and i'm sick of people not saying that shit What's wrong with dating somebody that's got their shit together? What's wrong with dating somebody that can take care of themselves and you can take care of yourself? I don't know why that's like, is this like a crazy concept, dude? Is this like not something that people want anymore? What the fuck happened, bro? No, I want to date somebody that can take care of themselves. I don't want to date somebody that needs me to take care of them. Someone who makes you feel safe and puts your needs above their own. Someone that you can travel and with. And then also the like, feeling safe i i i, I kind of understand that a little bit but we live in a modern society and stuff like that like I've, I've i've met women before that are like oh i need a man that like if i get robbed in the street he's gonna like fight that guy and he's gonna you know he's gonna defend me against this and this and this and i'm always thinking like what the fuck are you talking about dude like buy a gun you know what i'm talking about get some fucking mace and shit like that like i get it like you want somebody to defend you but we live in a society where police are a thing. There's like tons of places where we can, uh, cause like a lot of times if you get into a fight with people nowadays, dude, you're going to die. And I'm not trying to die. So when I hear people say that shit, I'm always thinking like, what do you mean safe? Like, please let me know what you mean by safe. With it isn't going to rush you. I'm going to rush you, dude. Oh man, a hundred percent. I'm going to fucking rush you. Why are you taking so fucking long to get dressed? What do you do? Why do you need me to pick out eight different outfits? They all look relatively the same. They're all like different colors of pink. Okay. I don't care. None of them. This one, that one, this one, I don't care. Whatever. Now you're going to go in the bathroom and apply lipstick for 45 minutes and spray your hair with sparkles. I don't want to. I'm just sitting here on my couch, on my phone, watching YouTube for 45 minutes. And I go, 
What the fuck am I eating? What, what are we waiting for? Why are you taking so long? Can we go? Yes, I'm gonna rush you. You take too long. That isn't gonna push you to do something that might injure you. What the fuck are you talking about? Push you to injure you? What are you talking about, dude? What? Like, what? Fortunately, this world is not really built for bigger people and does not accommodate bigger people. Thank God, right, dude? Because, like, it's not that the world... <laughs> Specify what you mean by the world. Like... Mother Nature doesn't accept the fact that you're fat. If you're a bigger person, you're literally not equipped to handle nature. So, yeah, that and then like society has is better equipped for handling fatter people, but still not the best. Definitely better than Mother Nature. So it just depends on what you mean. You need someone who is sensitive to that and truly understands. I don't. Trust me, you don't want to end up with a partner who is going to resent you for your size every single day. You could just lose weight and not have that be an option. And realistically, there are just some things that I don't want to do either. I don't want to go to the rock show. I don't want to scale a mountain. I don't want to go to another powerlifting meet. You have okay. to think logic. What the fuck are you talking about? Who are you dating? You literally just told me you're attracted to emo guys. You're attracted to alternative dudes and punks. And you said, I don't want to go rock climbing and I don't want to go to a powerlifting show. What the fuck, dude? I thought I thought the guys who were dating were like listening to My Chemical Romance and crying in the fucking corner because Fallout Boy's not a band anymore. What the fuck are you talking about? What dudes are you do what, what dudes are you dating that have these? Okay, maybe I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, bro. But I, I maybe these dudes are powerlifters or like rock climbers. I didn't fucking know. And by the way. It's okay not to do stuff with your person. Like, I know I did people that love going to the gym way more than me. It's okay that that person goes to the gym more than me. And they go, hey, do you want to go to the gym with me? And I say, nope, can't go to the gym today. I got other stuff to do. I don't want to go to the gym today. You know what they go? Okay, that's fine. Can you go with another day? Yeah, no problem. And that's okay. Because I'm going to do stuff that they don't like doing. And they're going to do stuff that I don't like doing. That's fine. That's literally okay. You don't have to do everything with that other person. You're not like... You might be missing out hypothetically, but you're also like doing other stuff together on the other side. If someone actually fits our lifestyle, you are gorgeous. There's nothing wrong with you. That's, that's uh, what if that, per what if somebody's like sitting there picking their fucking nose and flicking it and then like rubbing their nutsack? You know what I'm talking about? Like, what are you talking about, dude? No, sometimes there is something wrong with you. Sometimes there is problems. Sometimes there are things that you can make adjustments for. That's okay. You're good. You can make those adjustments. You're good. Stop focusing on the people that don't want you. And ask yourself, do you really like them or is it that you feel like you can't have them? True. You should like the person that you're with. Too many people are just in relationships because they want a boyfriend or a girl or they want a girlfriend. Not good, by the way. Not good. And by the way, it's okay to make changes. You don't have to be fat for your whole life because you feel like that's okay. No, it's fine. Your life would literally probably improve immeasurably if you were thinner. Should you tell the person that you're talking to or the person that you're dating what your preferences are? Yes. I'm asking this because... What do you mean, should you tell them what your preferences are? I fucking hope so. What do you mean, dude? Yeah? Or at least you should be passively telling them through the process of dating them. So, like, for instance, I know that I like girls with vaginas. So, me, like, dating you is passively telling you, like, yeah, oh, man, vagina's so good in my mouth. Please, you know, pee in my mouth. Ah, uh, right? As I've been like dating out here in Korea, um, dude, I think it's um two things. Two things come up. Um, the stupidest shit in the world is when people have those like I don't know what you call them, but the sparkles on the teeth. What the fuck is that? Why do so many people have those on their teeth nowadays? What is that? Like bedazzling teeth? Somebody let me know down down below in the comment section. But yes, you should probably let that person know what your preferences are within limitations. If they don't apply to certain uh, preferences, that's okay too. But it's alright if they ask. Um. And one thing is the first the first one is I don't like skinny women. And I'm like, so is the only reason that you're talking to me is because I'm not skinny? Because if you're dating somebody, dude, when when is this coming up in a conversation? I would need to know that. If you're dating a dude and he just is like, hey babe, um, you know that like hey be hey babe, hey babe, you know that like I don't really like skinny girls, right? And you're just sitting there fat as fuck, and you're just like, Oh yeah? Oh yeah. Okay. Thanks. Like, what do you? What is the purpose of that? I would love to know that. I really don't care about that, my guy. If we already matched, I'm assuming that there's some kind of attraction there. And if you're, and furthermore, if we started a discussion after matching, I'm assuming that there's an attraction there. True. You really don't have to say. Yeah, that. like passively. If you know, through 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 the. Through your deductive abilities, you should determine that this person likes you because you are their preference. You know, so saying 
either I don't like skinny girls or, oh, I love fat women. I'm just like, it's okay within like context. Like for instance, if you're having sex and you go like, oh man, I love those thighs. Oh man, those big juicy fucking thighs, bro. Oh my God, that shit is so good in my mind. Like that's fine. That's okay. But if you're just randomly bringing it up in conversation or you're eating like sushi or something and you're like, hey, you know, I really fucking, I really fucking despise skinny girls, right? Ugh, ugh, gross. Like that's going to be a little bit concerning. Okay, but that's just like a physical attribute. I am not the only fat person. Around. That is another good point, dude. If you are, if somebody says like, what, what is something that you're attracted to me about? And you go to this, like, it's okay if you're, look, sometimes it's a trap. It's a trap almost always times. But if somebody goes like, what's something really attractive to me? And you go, wow, I really love your eyes. And somebody goes, well, like a lot of other girls have eyes. And it's like, oh, so you wanted me to go into details about why I love your eyes exactly. I don't know. I love your fucking stigmatism. I love the way that your fucking left eye is slightly slower than your left. You know, like, what do you fucking want from me? If, if you're asked in a question, it's fine. But it's definitely a little bit concerning if somebody's dating you and they go, I love that you're fat. As if that's like anything about you that's special. That's why I always say like you should be an individual first. You should make yourself the person ra rather than like being fat. Like I see a lot of people that literally put themselves in generalization. So like I meet a lot of dudes. They go, I, I ask them like, who are you? They go, yeah, I'm a black man, dog. I love being black, 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 black. And that's fine. I love that you love being black. But why is being black the first thing? It should be like whatever your fucking name is, Jamal or fucking Harold or whatever. It should be that first. Then it should be like all these other things. Like for me personally, if you ask me, David, who are you? I'd be like, I'm David. I like Legos. I like Star Wars. I like, you know, fucking Yu-Gi-Oh. I like, you know, America. I like all this stuff. And then like on the fifth, on the, on the 20th down, it'd go, oh yeah, I'm white. You know, like that would be, or like, I'm a dude. Like all these things are so far down in correlation to the things that make me who I am the most. So I, I, I really despise it because it's like, again, yes, she's right. It is a general, it is like a very general thing. And you don't have to put down skinny women to, you know, let me know that you're into bigger women. True. It doesn't, mm, it doesn't, it just hits my ear wrong. Like, a, right. like a wrong note. No, she's right. Like, bing, like. Uh, same thing goes for like ethnicity right um when they're just like i don't like dating korean girls because blah 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 and i'm just like so you're only talking to me because i'm not korean i would love to know what they mean by that dude i've met a few dudes that have said that before to like damn i met a lot of black dudes that have said they don't like dating black girls because they're hood or they're like they're a lot to deal with or a lot there are a lot of problems or like they're really extra and i i can kind of see where they're coming from because maybe they grew up in an environment where, where maybe that was incentivized. But I always hear that on black guy side. And I've dated a lot of black girls. Or at least I've dated a lot of black women that were very diverse. And I've never had a scenario where this girl was this way because this guy thought that. Now, most people are very, very... Like, they might fit a little bit in that stereotype that you think they would. But when you get down to the nitty gritty, these people are fundamentally different human beings from one person to the next, right? But I hear quite a bit that like black girls are just really unapproachable because they're just extra or they're very masculine or they're very this or they're very that. And I see where it comes from, right? Because like what? The black population in America is 13%, right? Half of that is women, which is 7%, right? Like six or 7%. And then you have this very vocal minority of black women that are overspoken, right? That a lot of people would look at and go, this is what black people, black women are when that's not the case. Like maybe it is a case for some black women, but most people are very, very unique individuals. And it like pisses me off when people go, this is a way I don't want to date black women because they all, they're all like this. That's obviously not the truth. That'd be like me going like, oh yeah, all black guys are the same. They all like have Vaseline Tims and ankle bracelets. You know what I'm talking about? Like, what are you fucking talking about, dude? You obviously don't have an ankle bracelet. I mean, you have Tims, but you know what I'm talking about? Like it's, it's, you're, 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 you're like boiling people down to like the, the bare minimum of like not even what they are. Also, why did you feel the need to throw Korean women under the bus? Because they smell bad. Because they all smell bad. And they like K-pop. Just to justify why you're talking to me. It's like, you can like what you like, my guy. But also, maybe keep it to yourself. I, I don't know. know. I would love it if he told me, man. Because, like, I don't know about keep it to yourself. Because all if you're saying keep it to yourself, that means that you know that he has issues. And you just don't want to hear the issues, so that way it doesn't become a problem. But it's gonna it's a problem regardless. You're just not knowing the issues. You know what I'm talking about? I would rather for this guy to actually telegraph or tell me what these problems are, so that way I can identify that this person is fucked up and I can leave. 
That's great. Please tell me more about why you think this way because I think it's really fucked up and I'm prepared to leave. Like that personally is way better in my opinion. I guess the only saving grace is that when guys do this and they just trip all over themselves saying stupid things like that, that it's a really easy and immediate red flag and then I don't have to deal with them anymore. Yeah, no shit. And by the way, I wouldn't suggest just breaking up with somebody because you got a red flag. If you got multiple red flags, you you probably are okay with leaving. But like, dude, just because somebody is a red flag doesn't mean it's an immediate, I got to leave. Like, for instance, for me, a red flag for a woman would be having kids. I don't want to date somebody that has kids. I know that a lot of people might want to do that. But for me, I'm not down for that. That would be a red flag for me. That doesn't mean I'm going to stop dating that person. That just means it's something to be aware of. This person has kids. It's fine, but it's also a red flag for me. And the same thing for, wow, you're dating somebody and their credit score is four. Well, it's a red flag, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stop dating them for that. You know what I'm talking about? It just means that something to be aware of. So when people say there's a red flag and they just immediately leave that person, it always comes off like really, really stupid to me because it's like, this was a really, really good person that you had. And yes, they had this, like everybody has red flags to one degree or another, but to what, to what extent are you like making these problems problems is like the real issue. I've met plenty of people that have dismissed great, amazing people over a red flag that was almost nothing. And then like, I, a few months later, they'll date somebody even worse. And it's like crazy to me. But anyway, that's the saving grace of it all. I'm just like, oh, okay. I don't have to take this guy seriously. I don't have to talk to him because what serious person goes around adding that into a conversation? Because imagine if it was the other way around. Imagine if he's like a tall guy and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you're definitely, you're definitely like my type, my preference because I hate short guys. So I'm on a date with you because you're tall. <laughs> That would be so weird. That would be so weird and just rude to say. And then the same thing too. It's just like, oh, why did I swipe on you? Uh, because you're not American. So as long as you're fat. not American, then I don't care. True. It's like, okay, well then that's that's really shallow and that's really weird. And it's weird to say. It's like you can have a preference and be like, oh yeah, like I, I like dating Korean guys or I like dating tall guys. I like dating American guys, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so if you like that, swipe on them, have a conversation. That seems to be implied. Yeah, passively, passively telling you what they like. That's, that's the most important thing. It's okay if somebody wants to ask you, and it's probably better if they did ask you because it's always almost it's always better for somebody to show instead of tell. So if you get asked, hey, what kind of car you drive and it turns out that you drive a Lamborghini, that is way more attractive than somebody just saying, hey, you know, I drive a Lamborghini. That is a gross cringe and gay. So but so what you should do instead is like wait for that person to ask ask that question. It will come up eventually and then when it does come up it's going to be way more satisfying to hear that answer. But I don't know why we're saying out loud things that are implied. <laughs> but again, yeah, it's like telegraphing. You're like, you're like a Pokémon attacking. For me, it's it's a form of bad manners and if a guy is going to tell me within like the first like conversation, you know, I'm talking to you because you're not skinny or you are like what i like physically it's kind of like that's so shallow yeah you're dating wrong guys there are plenty of dudes that will do that because a lot of guys are emotionally not there it does take a guy look women i feel like are a little bit more emotionally a, a little bit more emotionally secure than a lot of men a lot of men are bricks i don't know why so many dudes We'll just sit there for hours and hours and hours. You'll ask him a question like, hey, man, how's your day? And he'll go like, oh, it was great. And you look on the fucking news and you found out that this guy like, I don't know, got robbed five times and he like fell off a fucking building. And like, it was like the most eventful life, life journey of like ever. And then he'll come home and go, yeah, it was, yeah, a good day. It was a good day. It was a good day. Yeah. yeah, that's, you know, that's what it was. And don't get me wrong. It's okay. I do that sometimes where I'm just like sitting down and I just decompress and I'll just play Yu-Gi-Oh for an hour, two hours, right? That's fine. But so many dudes need to level up in the emotional awareness, dude. Too many dudes are just fucking bricks. And the same thing here. If you're sitting there and you're just blurting stuff out because you think that it's like, oh, this is just what I'm going to say because, bro, there's a time and a place for this shit. And eventually, as you date more people and you become more and more aware of yourself um, and you become more and more secure in yourself, you'll eventually realize this stuff, hopefully. Um, and because, like, I know when I was younger, I said some really fucking cringy stuff. And that's okay. I mean, it's not okay, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I learned from my mistakes, and I'm no longer say, gonna say those cringy stuff. And it's really important to learn from other people's mistakes. So, like, learning from this woman, for example. That's very, like, 
obviously we can talk to each other because we're attracted to each other like why don't you ask me things that matter or how fat how fat that ass be girl yeah <laughs> what 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 questions matter say things that matter instead of being like i don't like this i don't like that because you're dating guys that are i don't know you should probably dating like younger guys dude i don't know dude um, there's a reason why women tend to date a little bit older than them because usually women are a tad bit mature than men compared to the same age bracket. So it's okay. Like it happens. You're going to date dudes that are a little bit immature. Just date dudes that are a little bit more mature. I know it's a little bit hard to discern those things, but, um, it's what you're going to have to do, especially if you want those particular types of engagements. I like this and then whatever. I'm like, I don't like because I'm like, Ooh, mm, mm, mm. Mm. Yeah, that's why, like, if I'm, if I ever, like, met up with a girl, I almost never keep the conversation about me unless she asks something about me. I would almost always, like, keep it on her. I'd be like, so, like, what are you doing in your career? Tell me about this. Tell me about that. Wow, that happened to you there. Wow, that's really fucking cool. That's, I, I can't believe you did that. Wow, those shoes are really nice. Where'd you get those shoes? Those are really nice. Really? You got them from there? That seems really fucking cool. Tell me about that. What kind of deodorant do you wear? Wow, tell me about your skincare routine. Do you like eggs? I don't know. There's, like, a whole bunch of things that you can do. Instead of just talking about yourself and saying things that you do and do not like, it's okay if it comes up naturally in conversation. But most of the time, if you're just like telling somebody, I like this, I like this, I like this, I like this, what the fuck are you doing? What are you, 10 years old? Stop. I don't care that you like that. I don't like it. So I guess that's my preference. I don't like Don't it. talk to me about your preference. It's literally like being a child, right? Like kids will tell you that shit. You ever talk to like a child, dude? Like a kid that's under 10 will just come up to you and go, I saw, I saw that you were, I saw that you were wearing that gray shirt with, with Darth Vader on it. And you'll go, yeah. And he'll go, I don't like him. I don't like how, I don't like you two now because you wore, I don't like how you wore it. So I don't like you anymore. And I saw your bob and she's ugly. My bob is prettier than your bob. And just like sitting there like, bro, what the fuck, dude? Like, what is wrong with you, man? Get the fuck out of my face. That's the same shit. Like, the, if you're just doing that in conversations as an adult, fuck off me. Suck me off. Because it's weird. I'm assuming, again, that if we are talking to each other is because we like how each other, we like what, what we see. And that's okay to like what you see. You don't have to, like, go into detail about it or whatever. But again, like I said, silver lining at least when they when they act like that, like they seriously have like no, I don't know, nunchi. I don't know what would you call it, like no sense, self awareness or something yeah. in like to to just like say that kind of thing out loud. I'm like, okay, great, thank you for saving me the trouble. Yeah. This is something I am not looking to pursue with you anymore, and uh, that's my preference. <laughs> anyway. No, she's okay. right about that. At least you know. Like it's, I feel like it's almost always better for that other person to tell you those things. So that way you can at least have that information up front because more information is almost always better. So thank you 100% for telling me why you're a bad person or not a bad person or at least telling me red flags. That's great. But anyway, guys. We're going to end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate it for everybody to leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video. All those things I'd appreciate tremendously. It's a super long video today, so I hope you enjoyed the longness. The big, thick, girthy longness. I hope you enjoyed that. That fucking big, meaty, girthy video length. Look how fucking long it is down here. Whoa! Big, girthy, meaty longness. Anyway, um, if you watched the video in its entirety... Leave it down below by typing in meaty, because that's what this video length is. Meaty, big, girth, all the voluptuousness, all that. Look at that runtime. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're so beautiful, by the way. Oh, man. You look so gorgeous, so cute, so amazing. You are a an amazing, beautiful, spectacular human being. I love that you're working on yourself now. I love that you're taking that and you're making the self work. And you're, you're in the process of improving your life. You're improving other people's lives. And I love that about you. I love that you're working and you're, you're, you're catering to yourself. And you're taking care of yourself as though you were taking care of somebody else. And that is amazing. I love that you went outside the other day when it was raining with an umbrella. I love that you wore that hoodie. I love that you like those shoes. I love those pants. I love your kneecaps and your eyebrows. Anyway, guys. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, Twitter, Discord, all that stuff will be linked down below in the description. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. 